Oh, we are. Okay. We're on. That's on. All right. Uh, we think we are ready. We're live streaming on Facebook, so we will call the meeting of the Board of Finance to order um, with the second evening of deliberations. Uh, first thing I'd like to do is I will do a roll call. Um, we'll be deliberate. I apologize to the public if you are on that we will not be asking you to identify yourself but we'll just be making sure department heads and uh, other invited guests that we need to interact with, we have them properly listed through our call-in so we can see who's talking here. Um, so I will first go through the Board of Finance. Glenn Frischman, are you on? Here. Uh, Lynn Young, are you on? I am. Mike Fauerbach, Present. are you next to me? Uh, uh, Deb Norman? Here. Um, you may need to speak up because okay. some of the people uh, were saying it was a little hard to hear you yesterday. Okay. Um, Bob Stachin. Yep, present. And Dave Motherway was going to be a little delayed. Um, is he there yet, Glenn? Not yet. Let's find out as soon as. Okay. Glenn, give us a minute. Dave, are you on? Might have either in or out. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to go down the list that we have here. So I see Alexa Garvey. Are you on? Yes, I am. Okay. And we have Danielle Cheeseboro here in attendance with us. Um, Chris, I'm assuming Chris is Chris Williston from Board of Ed. Is that you, Chris? Correct. Okay. Uh, freshman twice. Jim Sullivan, you're on? I am. And Jill Sr., you're here with us? I am. Uh, Leanne Theodore, you're on? Here. Uh, and then I know that we heard Barbara and Tom from the DPW. Can you guys make some noise so we know which caller you guys are? We're here. Barbara and Tom Curioso. Are they, you think they're Get married. Five and seven? I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're on one line in the um, highway garage. Okay, we think we've got you identified, Barbara. Um, are there others on the line who we haven't identified? Darren Stewart. All right, Chief, can you um, say how great the PD is? What was that? I'm sorry. We're just trying to, okay, yeah, we think you're user four. We're just trying to identify you on the uh, call, so I just need you to say a sentence or two. Okay, yep, we got you identified. As, uh, is there anyone else who's on the line who has not identified themselves? Who's a department head or invited guests? Who's calling user five? I don't know, that's what I'm trying to ask. That's probably one of the press, uh, as it was yesterday. So um, Joe would be muted or anyone from the day would be muted. So I'm trying to make sure that we have identified uh, anyone from Board of Ed, DPW, um, Human Services, anyone like that, that we make sure that they're identified properly so we can see that they're able to interact with us. And there will be probably other users who will not be um, identified by us. All right, and this so, is Alexa. Um, Van and uh, Chris was able to get on, and Peter and Gary didn't get the message that they had a link until about 4.30. They might not be aware yet or be able to get on. Okay, so you know. Alexa, do you have, If you said that Van is on, do you, I have not been able to identify him as of yet. I'm sorry, after you said I heard Van... Um, you told you just said that Van was able to connect, but we I don't. I can hear you, Tim. I'm, I'm reiterating it. We you know, said Alexa, I can hear you, but I can't hear them either. 
Okay. Okay, hang on. We're working on it. Yeah, I think they're muted. We're not, we're not, no. we're not we're, hearing on the phone here. Try again. Okay. Kate, can you hear us now? Yeah. Can you hear you now? Okay, we're working on it. You, you cut off there for about 40 seconds. All right. Okay, we're just, right now we're double checking the connection here and making sure everything is right. Alexa, what I was saying to you is that we have not heard that Van is on the call. Um, can you verify that he is called in or not? I, I do not believe he's called in. Um, they just got the message at about 4.30 that they had an invite to log in. So he may not um, be where he can log in. I'm not sure where he's at right now. Okay. And I just want to reiterate to everybody, we on the top of the agenda that we published put the call-in number and the way to watch on Facebook Live. Obviously, you can't um, interact that way, but if people called in through the number that's on the agenda, um, we're able to have Roger unmute them and make sure they're able to be a participant. So we have, I, I give, again, I'll say it again, I did it last night. Um, I'd like to really give Roger his and, and uh, Stacy a lot of uh, kudos for getting this pulled together in a very short amount of time. Um, as most everybody knows, these, these, uh, events of the past couple weeks and days have really changed how we view normal life and uh, hopefully we get through this pretty quickly and and life as we know it can return to a, more of a normalcy but in the interim uh, I can't say enough good things about how town hall has man managed to function how people are trying to go out their normal lives and get everything done and it's no small effort that all these people have done and I think we're really lucky to have the, the crew we have working on this. Um, Chris, I'd be remiss to not include you in that too. I know you and Roger have worked together quite well to get this all sorted out from a, an IT standpoint and I appreciate everybody for all that they've done. Um, that That's the good news. The bad news that I'm going to present is that um, the new unemployment numbers came out uh, over this last day and they rose to 281,000 last week over 211,000 from the prior week and that's large that 70,000 increase in claims is larger than any week to week movement uh, that's happened since or during the 2008 financial crisis so i think to put some context on what we're trying to do here I don't know that we've even felt the full impact of the coronavirus on the environment and the economy, and we're already seeing things heading in a, in a pretty dire manner. So I appreciate everyone's efforts to try and look at how we can relieve the burden onto the taxpayers, um, because we have a lot of uncertainty moving forward, um, and it is, it is going to get worse still, in my opinion, before it gets better but I appreciate everyone working together here and trying to make the best of a very challenging, challenging time and scenario. Um, with that spirit of collaboration and working together, I would like to uh, recognize Alexa Garvey. I think you mentioned that you might have some um, operating budget uh, cha changes or recommendations for us as well as some other things. Yes, Tim, I do. Um, and in the same sphere of, of what you were saying, um, it's, it's no secret that I, I work in an accounting firm. Um, my, my husband's a CPA. We have deal with a lot of small businesses, a lot of community members, and also larger financial institutions, banks. And it, it's pretty grim and rough out there right now. Um, and that's certainly not lost on me as we follow through with these tasks and still be able to provide our, our students uh, with the education they need and our employees um, a, a job for the, for the next day. Um, uh, I spoke with Dr. Riley and he was in a meeting yesterday uh, with local chambers of commerce, business owners, et cetera, et cetera. And um, he also believes we need to help to help our taxpayers and businesses and see what we can do and understand that this is a unique and very uh, difficult time. Um, so with that said, he and his administration team, who I cannot say enough about, um, 
went through our budget and I asked them for their 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 best offer and they're just amazing. They came up with our operating budget uh, a, a decrease to 0.7 percent increase. So a 0.7 percent increase over last year's budget, which means an increase of only two hundred and sixty five thousand three hundred seven dollars. Um, and at at that same point, they also went through the SIP, and they they did have some changes to to those SIP items. Um, they've reprioritized, and I think the email that I sent to answer some of the Board of Finance questions uh, addressed some of the the rationale for perhaps some of those changes. And um, it did not increase what the SIP amount was at this point um, with the changes they made. Uh, it, it looks like the total I have here would be $669,000. So a decrease from what from what you had. So Alexa, I, I appreciate that. Um, for those that are f either from the public or not uh, Board of Finance members, do you mind going through those numbers um, so that we are clear line by line for the SIP um, obviously not the operating budget, but for the SIP? Certainly, I will. And um, I just emailed you a copy in case you need to have it uh, in front of you. Yep, um, I, I, have, I have that here now. Um, Jim Sullivan, I will, okay. I will work to uh, get that over to you pretty quickly here. Um, okay. Great. I can probably even email that to him if that's easy or whatever is going to be easiest for you. If you could email it, that'd be great because I don't have a lot of cell service here in the basement of Town Hall. Um, exactly. Yeah. Well, like, I'll do it. I've, I've got it right here and got it teed up to go to him. I'll send it right now. To thank him. you, Lynn. Okay. Lynn, thank you. Okay. So, uh, recommend the following items to be removed from SIP and placed in bond. And I, I guess the caveat to this is if, if we go forward, if it's not able to be bonded, these will be items that we'll, we will be coming back to ask for, okay? So, but this is planning, you, you said for a bond, so this, these items are for a bond. Line 161, the roof ladders. Line 162, the air conditioning for our Stonington Middle School for the two million. Line 173, building management system. Line 175, district office upgrades. Line 190, Stonington High School generator. Line 191, Stonington High School gym upgrades. That was 50,000. That was the difference between the gym floor and the other items that weren't being um, funded. Um, per your discussion yesterday. Line 192, Stonington High School HVAC, and that's that 599,000 number. To remain in SIP, line 154, the computer servers, and that's 410,000. And I think the description of why that amount is needed was in uh, an email earlier today. Line 155, staff, staff laptops, we'll move that to a dollar for now. Line 156, the one-to-one, -one, we're able to reduce that to $72,000. Line 157 for the phones, one dollar. Line 158, security cameras, $50,000, that's for district office and other schools, they felt that was extremely important, especially with the new buildings and district office, which doesn't really have cameras, and we have so many people in and out of there at all times of day. Line 181, floor repair, 20,000. Line 188, kitchen equipment, the 52,000. Line 195, the science rooms at Stonington Middle School, the 20,000, um, Peter broke that out. We would be missing some shelving, but other items we would be able to, the, the major items we, we would be able to 
supply with that amount. And then 191, the gym floor, which was about 45,000, I think we had in there from last night. And then to remove from SIP, line 167, the paint, that's 20,000. Line 177, the locks. Line 186, furniture, 20,000. Uh, the tractor, which was al already removed. Uh, line 193, the, the vehicle for the field. And then line 194, the test courts, because that's being moved over into human services. Yep. <coughs> okay, so um, Jim Sullivan, do you want to go with me line by line? Because a lot of these are mirrors of what we had from last night. Right, I didn't make any of those changes. I was just kind of highlighting them in color so was what their status was. So I need to go line by line. And yeah, we'll do line right. by line. All right. <laughs> so. Jim, did you get the email I sent you? It's Lynn. I did. Okay, good. I think for Thank clarity you. of everybody, though, we'll go through line by line. I can do it with Jim real quick because some of these have zero change and some of them we had money in that the Board of Ed has recommended to take down um, from there. So let's do that. Or, um, or up. <laughs> or, or up. Yeah, yeah. So, so, yep. that's what yeah. so line 160, I'm going to do these um, ought to be down to a dollar, Jim. Okay, can we just go down the line 154, 155 and do it that way? Sure, we can do whatever you want to do, Jim. Um, that's going to, so 154, they've recommended for 410,000. Jim, can you make, can you do it this way? Can you make a, sep, a second spreadsheet so that we know where we started from and, and these recommended changes and then we can see the net delta between the two? Um, yeah, let me try that. Okay. Just make a total copy of the, so that then, because then it's not, I'm not presenting these as yeah. done deals because the Board of Finance ought to have an ability to uh, look through these all and see the overall net impact on the, on the budget. Okay, yep, let's do that. Okay, you all tell right. me when you're ready. I'm ready. Okay, line 154. Back to four hundred and ten thousand. Okay. Line one fifty five, one dollar. Fifty five, one dollar. Uh, okay. Line one fifty six, seventy two thousand. Okay. Line 157, $1. Okay, that's... Yep. Line 158, 50000 Okay. Line 161, $1. Wait, did you skip a line, 159? Oh, that's good. Yep. That, that went out. That, that's, yep. okay. that's zeroed, yep. Okay. So 161, I'm sorry, is what? $1. Okay, we got that, yep. Um, line 162, $1. Got it. Line 167, 20,000. Uh, no, sorry, my, my, my mistake, Jim. $1 for 167. Got okay, got it. Line 173, $1. Got it. Line 175, $1. Got it. Line 177, $1. Got it. Line 181, 20,000. Got it. Line 183, uh, I don't have anything for 183. That's, that you had zero. We zero that. Yeah. We zero that. So that, night. yep, that stays zero, Jim. Okay, got it. Line one eighty six. 
Uh, hang on. I'm gonna catch back up. One dollar. Did you get the one eighty six one dollar? All right. Okay. Yep, I got it. Okay. Line one eighty eight fifty two thousand. Got it. Line one eighty nine is zeroed. Got it. Line one ninety. One dollar. Got it. Line one ninety one. Forty five thousand. Got it. Line one ninety two. One dollar. Okay, hold on. Got it. Line one ninety three. One dollar. Got it. Line one ninety four zero. Got it. Line one ninety five. Uh, twenty thousand. Got it. Okay, that that should be everything, Jim. Can you give us an update? Thank you. Six hundred sixty-nine thousand and twelve dollars. That's the right figure, Alexa. Hey, yes, hey. that sounded right. I left off the twelve dollars, but yes, okay. thank you. And Van is now on the line. Just so you know. Jim, could you give that figure one more time? Okay, hang on a second, guys. Let, let me let me keep control of this meeting because I know we're all struggling with people talking over each other and how we're going to do this. So, um, Van, I know that you're, Alexa said you're on the line now. Could you talk and just say hello so that we can identify you on the screen that we have here? Yes, thank you, Jim. And I appreciate being online here. And I just reviewed what you said and it all matches what we would like to recommend. Perfect. Thank you, Van. I think we've got you identified. Yep. Perfect. <laughs> Don't get me distracted. All right. So that went from $757,072 down to $669,012 for the Board of Ed SIP budget. Um, members. Right. Whoop, go ahead. Who was it? Jim. Okay, go ahead. Um, and I'll, I'll let Chris uh, weigh in on this if he'd like. That four hundred and ten thousand. Uh, when I discussed with Chris, I don't know it was yesterday or the day before. Um, that equipment, I believe, is subject to the E-rate offset. So if we bump that number up to four four eighty, we can have an offsetting credit for the E-rate grant of seventy thousand dollars. Is that correct, Chris? That's correct, Jim. All right, so I think we can do that or bring the 410 down 70,000 and have the offset, or probably wouldn't be 70,000, it'd be 65 or 60. But. Correct. If we bring it down 70,000, what's going to happen is when the FCC issues us the 50% rebate, which we're conservatively estimating at 70,000, it could be more depending on the funding that's applied, it will be transferred to the Board of Ed. From that point, we can transfer it back to the town. So it, it, we can either put that extra 70000 in and make it a 480 line, or we can reduce that by seventy, knowing that the Board of Ed will receive that refund. It's Mike Fowler back here. Have we historically done that transfer back from the Board of Ed to the town? Yes. So members of the Board of Finance, given that historically we have received the refund back uh, directly to um, the town, uh, let me pull you. What's your preference to take it down by 70000 or go up to the 480 knowing that the, the total line is 410 I would propose one freshman. I propose taking it down. Okay, Glenn, I'm going to go one by I'm going to go one by one so we don't step on each other. So, Glenn, you're in favor of taking it down by the 70. Correct. Okay, Mike Fauerbach. Uh, same here. Mike is the same. Um, Lynn Young. Down by the 70. Uh, Bob Stachin. 
Yep, I concur. Deb, you got to speak up because I concur. Um, and Dave Motherway. I concur. All right, so we'll yeah. take that down by the seventy. Jim Sullivan, did you get that? I did, but that number, that 410 is not going to change. What, are, what you're going to see is down on line uh, 199, yep. you're going to have a $70,000 offset. Yep. Grant revenue. The net number. Like the net number. Yep. So the 410 will be clear, and I'll reiterate it exactly how you said it. If I've got it wrong, please let me know. Line 154 will remain at 410, and line 199 will show a credit of 70000 Correct. Okay, go ahead and make that change for us, please, Jim. Okay, I did. Are there other points um, in the changes to the SIP that the Board of Ed has suggested and come up with that members of the Board of Finance would like to discuss at this time? Okay, Mr. David, just for my edification, if I could ask you to tell me what lines 155 and 156 were. Sure, 155, the Board of Ed recommended to take to $1. Line 156, the Board of Ed recommended to take down to $72,000. Thank you, appreciate that. No problem. Uh, yeah, Mike. Mike Feuerbach had a, had a comment. Let me get to him next. Yeah, I just wanted to check with Jim. I want to confirm the bottom line now at, at net, net Board of Ed SIP 599012. Is that correct? No. No, okay. It's, it's 559995. That's net of the $109,000 of offsets. Speak up. I, I lost it there. We, yeah, we couldn't hear you at the end, Jim. The, the, the gross for the for the for the uh, for the board of ed SIP right now is on line one ninety seven is six hundred sixty nine thousand and twelve dollars. Then you have an offset of one hundred nine thousand dollars, seventy thousand dollars we just talked about, and then thirty nine thousand of a reappropriation of uh, fund balance, which isn't on your schedule. Uh, that's that's line two hundred. Okay. So that's one hundred nine thousand credits. That brings it down to five hundred fifty nine thousand nine hundred ninety five dollars. You're good, Mike? Yep. Do other Board of Finance members have questions, comments about what was just proposed by the Board of Education? I, sorry. Uh, Madam Chairman, one quick question. On the uh, line 161, did I understand that to be at a dollar? Yes, they recommended to bring that debt well. Um, they said removed from SIP and placed in the bond. I took that as one dollar because of the current environment. I didn't want to zero it in case that there is um, issues with bonding and we have an immediate need for some reason. So yes, that was to be taken down to one dollar. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, it's Mike Fowerback again. Just uh, sorry, n n another comment or one thing. I, I guess I just want to clarify. So. I'm very appreciative of the, you know, the, the, the proposed changes. Um, I understand. I mean, it certainly helps in the current fiscal year. But, but you know, what is being proposed here, if, if I've done my math correctly, is uh, a, a bond uh, total of about $3.4 million uh, for the Board of Ed for the items identified. Um, and and, and what, what I guess I don't necessarily, what I'm not necessarily comfortable signing up for immediately is we just take every one of those numbers at, at face value and, and go and bond $3.4 million. We had quite a bit of discussion and debate last night about some of these particular items, uh, wh whether there was a true need uh, around, around, around you know, e each and every one of these. Um, again, our, there were a number of them where we're asking for additional details or asking if we could stagger the investment rather than trying to do everything at once. So what, what's been proposed, as I understand it, uh, are, are the full numbers that were presented to us in the original SIP, which does not account for any of those proposed adjustments or, or timing or staging that we were talking about yesterday. So uh, just for clarity, I, 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 I'm not willing to 
just sign up tonight and say that, that we're, we're going to bond 3.4 million. I, I, that, that, we, that, that would essentially uh, negate all the discussion we had last night. So what I what I want to reiterate, um, and, and Alexa, I apologize, but I'll, I'll put I'll, I'll try and reiterate your words that you used. Um, that is what they recommend putting into bond. We can go through the details of that bond. And if an instance came up that they had an urgent need, that might need to be pulled out and flushed a little sooner. There is no commitment right now to that we're going to do that. I think the world is changing too rapidly right now. Um, but when we got to the point of bonding, much that we bonded with every other project, the, the details of what went into that would need to be flushed pretty explicitly to put into the bonding language. Well, Jim, Jim, well, this is Van, Van Riley. Go ahead, Ray. I would agree with Mr. Fowerback that this is not something we're asking a commitment for tonight. These are important items we'd like to work with the Board of Finance on placing in a bond, but there's certainly a lot of discussion that has to happen. We're not asking for a commitment. We're just saying these are very important things we think needed to be bonded in the you know in the near future, and we'll work with you on exactly how what numbers come up and all the details to that bond. Mike says thank you. That sounds good. I, well, I just got to make sure people can hear. Yeah, the thumbs up wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know if most of these people are on phones. So. Yeah, right. um, are there other? Yeah, Jim, I concur with number five. But... Thank you, Mr. Frischman. Are there other comments or questions from members of the Board of Finance for the Board of Education for these proposed changes? David, by the way, I'd just like to thank the Board of Education. Thank you, David. Um, our administration did an amazing job today. They understand it's a really very difficult time. Thank you. Other comments or that? Um, no, so the proposal is to reduce the operating budget. Jim, did you reduce the operating budget for the Board of <laughs> Education as well? I did not. Can, can we have discussion about this? We, we sure can. We can have discussion about everything. So the proposal was to reduce the operating budget, Jim, by $850,000. Okay. Jim, did you get that? Hold on, hold on a second. Yep, holding. Some technical Okay, I got it. Okay, um, Lynn would like to have discussion on that. Go ahead, Lynn. Um, I don't want to discuss that specifically quite yet. I just want to ask a question of Dr. Riley, which is uh, if we get in the next week clarity that schools are not going to open uh, until the beginning of the fall semester, if then, um, what can be done to save money out of this year's operating budget? Do you guys have any idea what not having school in session would accomplish in that regard? That's a good question. We, uh, we know we're going to have some savings. We won't be purchasing certain items. There are certain hourly employees, uh, like substitute teachers, etc., that will not be paid. Our plan right now is to pay all of our regular salaried people and our teachers, our carers, our custodians, and you know, keep them on call. They'll be doing work, some from home. Our custodians and maintenance will be doing work in the schools as needed. Um, well, I really can't give you any kind of number now, but I would imagine there would be some, some savings. Uh, we also have notified per student that we will not be paying for bus service, but there's some legal issues with that. So it, I really, I believe there will be some savings, 
but I really don't, I can't give you any kind of estimate today because we don't really know past March 31st how long our schools will be open. Right, so what I'm contemplating is if, as I don't know, many people expect, schools will remain closed for the semester, if we can try to get a handle on what those numbers might look like. I read in the newspaper uh, that Norwich and then elsewhere, not in southeastern Connecticut, but communities are all over the place, are um, furloughing, I guess, for want of a better term, various people who aren't teachers but work in classrooms. I guess you call them paras and paras and I'm not sure what else they would be. But have we given any thought to that, if school is going to remain closed to the end of the year? At this point, our paras, our secretaries, our custodians, our teachers are all on a salary, and we're using them as needed. It's only been a week, so we're not quite sure what we'll need. Um, I really can't answer that for the future. I know for the next two or three weeks, we're going to be uh, calling. Everyone's on call. All of our teachers, all of our pairs, all of our secretaries, custodians, and we're going to be using them to deliver instruction to our students. But I understand your question. It's a great question, and I'll provide information to the Board of Ed and to the Board of Finance as we, as we have more details. Yeah, so what would help us, or me anyway, um, prior to our decision about what kind of a mill rate to recommend and whatnot is if somebody could posit some scenarios. So if school is going to be out of session for, say, April, May, and whatever portion of June it would normally go, um, you know, maybe you could, somebody, maybe Gary or somebody could do a couple of scenarios like the paras and some of the people um, that Norwich has furloughed already. If they were furloughed, what kind of savings we have, first students, those kinds of things, so that we can make a decision. Um, you know, as to what that means going forward for next year's budget, if the savings are possible. Well, I, I understand that we prob probably can't do that for a couple of weeks. We were on, oh, the, I know. I know. on the phone today with the commissioner, and they will not commit to closings past March 31st. But right. we'll certainly keep you, the whole um, Board of Finance, Board of Select, and Board of Ed up to date as we learn more. Okay, because obviously as closings extend beyond the 31st, and everyone is doing this in you know two-week increments and whatnot to see how it goes, but as they extend, the thing that's going to go along with that, obviously, is destruction of the economy and people's jobs and everything else. And so this budget, if it gets anything, is likely to get tighter. So it would be good to have you know some sort of a model prepared to address that if that's what happens. And, um, good. We've, we've not, yeah, I would ask the same thing on the town side, meaning the other thing that I would say to you is if you have, if you've had stuff approved in this budget that has not been expended and is not committed, if uh, you can really give that a Hawkeye and see if we do in fact need to spend it. Because tough as this year is, next year could be, you know, like 1929. So we don't know yet. And we certainly, obviously, we understand that. We reduced our operating budget by $850,000 tonight, and we, yep. we understand the impact on our businesses and our community, and we're right with you on that. I understand. We're all in the same boat, finally rowing in the same direction, and I'm grateful for that. I appreciate it. But there's still, I think, proactively things we might be able to do with this year's budget that helps us next year. So and I, I, I get the same message for Danielle and the town and everything else. Anything that hasn't been extended that isn't critical, think twice about spending it. Mr. Chairman, Glenn Frischman, we have our special meeting after the public hearing on the 9th of April. That really for us is a hard deadline because we have to report that budget out to the Board of Selectmen to be placed before the voters. So if, uh, Dr. Riley, if you can lobby hard with the commissioner and anyone else you know to get some answers before that last date, that would be great. Well, they'll have them, Glenn, because school will either be in session or out. Well, let me let me interrupt and let me hang on. Let me let me get on top of this discussion here because we're trying to project to April 9th what may or may not happen. And I, you know, five days ago I had a different picture of what today would be. 
Um, they are working together. We also are in direct conversation with the Secretary of State's office. That April 9th date may or may not move. We do not know. Day by day, hour by hour, these things are changing very fluidly in how we are able to conduct our meetings so that we can comply with everything we need to and keep the public safe. Um, I got another email at about 4.30 today with additional things from the Secretary of State's office. I have not been able to digest it fully, so I can't tell you what it says, but I would not say we have a hard and fast date because everything is changeable right now and everything is in flux. So, um, well, in a normal day, we would have that. Right now, we don't, but we need to operate as though we do, and I think there's still going to be assumptions we're going to have to go with. It's the best assumption we got, but it may be completely wrong depending on what the environment happens. So I know that's hard to deal with, but that's the best I can tell you for what is the situation right now. Well, I, I, Tim, I agree with you, which is why I'm suggesting starting to model now for a variety of scenarios. And, and I, yeah, I, no, I don't disagree with that, and I think that they're on the way to that, but there's also so many things in flux right now. I know that the amount of time I'm spending on a day and I don't have a district full of kids to deal with is, is pretty taxing right now to try and stay on top of all the fluid changes we've all got. So um, I think that we'll work with them to try and get as much modeling as we can done ahead of time from the state, uh, from, sorry, excuse me, from the town side as well as the Board of Education side. And, you know, like you said to earlier, Lynn, I think we're all rowing in the same direction. We all know it's uncertain and we're gonna do the best we can so um, to move this all forward. Mr. Chairman, this is Bob Satchin. I just, and to, to Dr. Van Riley, just to follow up, I want to make sure that it doesn't, it is not a, a, any type of recommendation from the Board of, of Finance, especially in regards to furloughing, in regards to salaried employees. Um, and I don't want it to be perceived as that. If, if Member Young wants to have those modeling, I think that's valuable data. I think at this point all data is valuable, but I, I don't want it be, to be perceived that. The, the Board of Finance is making a recommendation as to any of those paras or secretaries or any salaried employees that they should, in fact, be, be furloughed. Um, again, taking into account that, that this is a changing um, environment um, and there's a lot of factors to take into account. But certainly data is, is useful to have, um, but I don't want it to be perceived as a recommendation in any way. I'm not recommending anything, Bob. I'm just suggesting that we shouldn't just consider this particular fiscal year a fait accompli because the money has always been allocated if it doesn't need to be spent. That's all I'm saying. Okay, and I, and I appreciate that, but I, just, I, I don't want to create a, 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 a sense that, that, that especially of, of within, the, within the Board of Education that, that, you know, that people are going to be losing their, their salaries or losing their jobs. That's not something that I think that we should be projecting. Again, I think data is useful. I think data is useful to, to have and, and to look and see. But I, I, that's certainly not a, a, a recommendation, at least from, from my perspective, that the, that the board should be um, projecting. But Tim, if I can just have a minute, I think the Board of Finance would be would appreciate what's happened this last week. Um, today at 2:30, each of our principals sent out a video tape to all of their um, all of their teachers about the upcoming distance learning plan that we're putting in shape, starting on March 30th. We have a distribution of computers program set up for next week for any student who needs a. A, you know, a Wi-Fi connection, a hotspot, they need a Chromebook, and all of our teachers are being connected with their, their departments at their grade levels starting tomorrow to plan for instruction for our students. Now, this could end up being a two- or three-week event, or it could end up going through June. But I want to say you have an amazing group of teachers and administrators in your schools that are putting together. So we are weeks ahead of other districts, and we should be very, very, very proud of that. Just wanted to let you know. I appreciate and that, Vince. Mrs. Alexa, I also wanted to add, Lynn, that our custodians have been helping out around in different town buildings, and maybe Peter can clarify this a little bit more. He just joined us. Uh, as far as making sure using our fogger, is that what it is, Peter? And yes. Making sure that these uh, buildings are clean. Yes, ahead, we, 
We've actually just set up a schedule with the town hall and human services and when we're going to go in there and disinfect and fog and deep clean all these areas. We've also offered our services out to the fire department and the police department. We've been at the police department twice to disinfect. We've been at the town hall twice to disinfect. So we have we have all the facilities. We're ready. We're we're willing and ready to, you know, meet the needs of anybody that needs to have their buildings cleaned and disinfected. Thank you, Peter. Peter, thank you. And, and I, I've I've hang on, Lynn, one second. I get to talk one one sec. Um, Peter, I've been here in town hall when when the staff has been doing that when you're custodians, and uh, I can tell you, everyone here in town hall appreciates having your people here and and are very appreciative of what you guys are doing um lynn Thank go ahead no i just want to make it very clear i'm not recommending you do anything with your personnel i'm only asking that you look at your own budget and figure out scenarios for yourself that's all i'm saying so that if um because next year for you uh, if we get the budget passed or agree to do it with the operating budget increase you're asking for is pretty lean so whatever you save this year, however you do it, and whichever way you choose, put to your stuff next year. But that's all I'm trying to say. So I just want to be clear about it. And I was just inquiring as to, you know, Norwich did what they did. It's widely out there. Everyone reads the paper and knows it. And, um, you know, I didn't know if they had a particular set of circumstances that was different than ours or if we were doing the same thing or other communities or what. That's all. I'm not suggesting you fire custodians or suggesting that anyone's sitting at home on the couch doing nothing for a paycheck. Okay, I try to be clear. Okay, Jim, can you give us an update as to with the new numbers that are in with the current suggestions from the Board of Ed, um, where we are for mill rate, please? Yes, it's... And, and Jim, can you ad again do it with the sewer and without the sewer? Or I'm sorry, Mike? Jim, it's Go a, ahead, Mike. Quick question. Uh, are we, um, I do have a couple of questions on the proposed reduction. By the board, should we do that now, or do you want to go through the mill um, mill rate and then go back to the board of ed? Why don't we go through the mill rate and go back to the board of ed immediately? Okay, right. is that yep. just so that we get a, a snapshot of where we are? Sure. That work. Go ahead, Jim. All right, this is with the uh, SIP money still in the budget for WPCA. Right. Mill rate would be twenty three point eight six. Point five increase over prior year. What, Jim, you cut out at the end. What was that? Twenty three eight six. Twenty three point eight six. It would be the current mill rate as it stands right now. That's a point five increase over last year's mill rate. Twenty three point three six. Do you want it done without the sewer, or do you? I'm okay. I got it. I okay. Thanks. And Jim, what does that number reflect? What does the 0.5 mill rate reflect as far as gross revenue? Well, the, the gross revenue is the same as the as the budget. It's uh, seventy-two million five hundred fifty-one thousand five hundred ninety dollars. So what, what's the increase of the budget year over year then that, re that, it, that the 0.5 increase in the mill rate reflects? It's actually, it, it's actually a decrease. So $1,097,230,000 decrease over last year. And so Mike Fowler, j j just to clarify, Bob, I believe what Jim's citing is it, it truly just the expenses. The, the, the mill rate increase is what the, the, the taxpayers are going to see. And if, I, if I've done my math right. correct, Jim, 2.1% uh, uh, mill rate increase or so. So taxes on average would, would be going up 2.1%, correct? Taxes are would, would go up 3.1%. 3.1%. The, the mill rate increase is 2.14%. Taxes would be 3.17%. What's the bridge? The bridge? I don't know. So we've got expenses, mill rate, and then you're citing the 3.14. Um, 3.17, that's the percent increase in taxes, taxes to be collected. 
the, ta- the mill rate and the taxes aren't the same because there's different factors. You have decrease in, in other revenue. You have the three million dollar took out a fund balance last year. So that I was thinking a lot of that was yeah, fund yeah, balance. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Yep, that's the difference. Mike, did you have? Did you want to go back? So, on on board of ed, yes. If we if we go back to the uh, yep. proposed changes, so uh, so again, uh, I think we're all appreciative of uh, the work that you know, the, the team's done um, to, to to reduce that increase to, to proposed increase to 07 uh, percent, or or eight hundred fifty thousand uh, dollar reduction relative. Uh, I'm sorry, eight hundred fifty thousand dollar increase relative to the, the prior year. Um, but I, I, I'm sorry, no. No. That, that was a difference. Difference. That was a difference. It was a, yeah, yeah, decrease of the first submitted. It's about a $200,000 increase right, right, right. over prior year. Okay. Um, so I guess what I'm trying to uh, get my uh, head around a little bit better here is so so the $850,000 change versus what we were looking at last last night. Um, what what, what uh, can, can you give us a, a few examples of, of the types of, of reductions you're intending to make to, to deliver? On that number, um, what, 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 what's going to be uh, impacted to get get down to what you're proposing? Dr. Wiley, can you comment on that? Since I wasn't involved in the meeting. Roger. Dr. Wiley, can you hear us? Yes, it's kind of, yes, I can. Um, Mike Fowback was asking um, for some examples of the, the reduction of the 850. Well, what we've always done is we take whatever happens in the referendum, then we bring that back to the Board of Education with some options for them. It could be some... You know, we could purchase less items. We can use uh, uh, we could use some personnel that retire or leave. And there's lots of options that the board of ed will consider. We don't usually do that at this point in the process. We do that after we know what our bottom line is. So the board of ed has not had that discussion yet. Uh, so, so I guess uh, yeah, I was just assuming that you guys just gave us a new bottom line. So I was just trying to understand. What your assumptions were in, in delivering that that new bottom line to us was it uh, was it an assumption around you know increased attrition of staff was it um, you know one of the things that, that I think a few of us were looking at at one point was uh, the highway department's uh, you know budget is going up uh, somewhat to uh, provide certain services to uh, you know, to the schools uh, was it a, another look at those numbers and perhaps reducing based upon that I'm just trying to get some sense for how you how you uh, reduced by 850000 We We did look at attrition. We looked at other resetting some other priorities. We looked at the uh, the issue that we're dealing with with our health care reserve, and we've looked at other items that we feel we can put off for a year. And we came up with that was the number that we could, that we could keep people employed. We wouldn't have to lay off anyone. There may be some attrition that we might consider. The Board of Ed might want to consider attrition. But uh, we'll also, if we use some of the, uh, the health care reserve that both the district and the town have, we would maintain the, the 30% that we have all decided on. Um, we've looked at other, you know, other costs, and we just came up. That seemed to be the number that we could avoid layoffs, which we want to do. The worst thing we do now is start laying off people. I was on a phone call yesterday, um, Danielle, and set up a, a conference with conference call with um, local businesses, the Chambers of Commerce, and to hear that you know the aquarium and the seaport are laying off you know lots of either dozens and hundreds, a hundred people. We just want to avoid that. That doesn't help our town at all. Well, yeah, I fully we came agree. Up with, we really, uh, yeah. yeah, sorry. I, I mean, I fully agree. As a matter of fact, I. I my, my, my question isn't assuming it needs to move one, one way or the other. As a matter of fact, you know, I, uh, part of me worries that 
850,000 you know, you know, could be too much. Uh, uh, you know, I'm trying to understand what the potential implications are to, to teachers, to programming, et cetera, with that kind of reduction. So please don't misinterpret my question as you've got to do more. Um, I, I'm just trying to understand how you got to, to that number. Well, we looked at all those items that I mentioned, and it's something, you know, there's things that we need, but that we don't have to have right now. And we know that our businesses and our communities are suffering, so we, that's the minimum we could we could do to preserve our programs. It really, you know, we don't want to lay off people. I mean, there's two issues, preserving the educational programs for our students, which is our priority, and the second thing is protecting our staff from, from layoffs. And that's, you know, we spent the last couple of days looking at this, and that's, that's the number we came up with. We'll use every priority, everything that we could postpone, um, the, the health care reserves, um, any, anything else we can do, and that's, that's what we came up with. So I don't have all the answers because the Board of Ed has to determine that after we know, after the referendum, this is what we get, and they determine how to reallocate their budget. Okay. Other members have questions? <laughs> for the Board of Ed about it? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Glenn Frischman, uh, for Dr. Riley, when you say health care reserve, and I heard you say that you're going to maintain the 30% threshold. Now, uh, the MOU, that is, still, is that still being worked on, or are we going on the previous MOU? The discussions were to have a minimum of 25% reserve plus, but have a 30% would be better. So when we're looking at all the different areas that we might use to reduce by $850,000, we maintained at least the 30% reserve in that one account. We also looked at other, you know, retirements and all kinds of other things, but we did not ever want to reduce that health care reserve by more than the 30% that the, the um, ad hoc committee has discussed. Thank you. Other questions from the members for the Board of Ed relative to this proposal? Nope. So, as of right now, taxes are going up 3.17%. We got a 0.5 increase in the mill rate to 23.86. We have a decrease of uh, just under $1.1 million in the expenses. Um, I'd like to go and poll the members to see, get a feel of where you think we are, and um, if you'd like to uh, go back and discuss more. So, uh, Glenn Frischman, how do you feel we're at right now? Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> you know, I appreciate the, uh, the efforts on the part of the Board of Ed. But uh, I, I think that we need to get to zero. Uh, I think that uh, is, and that those are going to be very difficult decisions. But I think in light of the unprecedented economic dislocation, uh, I think we really need to look at every possible minimization of cost. Thank you, Mr. Frischman. Mike Farabach, how do you? Um, sorry, I'm just doing a little more yep. math here. But, uh, um, no, I, 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 I don't necessarily uh, believe we need to get to zero. Um, you know, I, I, I do think that uh, uh, you know, we, we, we have investment that needs to be made uh, both in our, you know, the, the, the town as well as uh, uh, its infrastructure and, 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 and you know, students and, and the board of ed. Um, so uh, again, do, do a little math on the fly here, but uh, um, you know, I, uh, I, I, I I'm open to further dialogue. I think there were a couple of items that we had a flag last night that we were going to, you know, go back to. Um, so I, I think actually, you know, to be honest with you, three three percent increase with taxes, inclusive of the WPCA CIP, which uh, um, again, I'm trying to do a little math here on the fly, but I think I think almost two percent of that is the WPCA uh, CPA. So so. Uh, really, we're talking about a 1% increase if we took that out and bonded it, um, or maybe maybe 1.2%, uh, 1.4. Jim, you can maybe help me with, with that, but, um, but I think I think you've got 
you know, a bit of an adjustment there. That we have we have to think about that as we're we're looking at these numbers. That uh, uh, I, I would expect it to be high with that higher with that WPCA capital investment included. Uh, Lynn Young. Budget's too high. Needs to come down. Bob Statchen. Um, I, I would I would echo um, Member Frischman's comments that that, that I, I do think this is a year, you know, both for, for for a variety of reasons why it would be able to to project that that the budget is not increasing, that that the taxes are not going up based on everything. I mean, a lot of these numbers when they were originally developed um, over the past few months, you know, we're not contemplating where we are now, and and I would. I, and I appreciate the efforts of the Board of Ed in, in coming back and what they've done in this in this short period of time. But I think you know the the entire budget can potentially be looked at to see is there anything that can be done um, to to provide that relief to get to that sort of goal of saying okay we're gonna we're gonna um, uh, not have an increase this year. I, I think that's an admirable goal that we we should still try to keep in mind. We shouldn't we shouldn't you know, we shouldn't act recklessly and, and not have safety services and, and, and not be able to provide, you know, the, the services that, that, that are going to be even perhaps more necessary given the certain, given the, given the circumstances. But I do think that given that things have changed so dramatically um, over, the, over the past few days that, that there is still the possibility for all of us in good faith to look and see whether there are any more opportunities to have savings that perhaps can be put off um, to uh, a period of time that, that's going to provide more stability and more, more predictability. Um, but again, I, I think the efforts that, 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 you know, that, that both the town and the, the Board of Ed have put forth on the budget thus far is, is commendable. Um, but but these are these are fairly dramatic times, and, and I think it may take even more dramatic action, um, or at least considering it. Thank you. Deb, um, I'll be a little shorter, but um, I reiterate what uh, Mike was saying that there are a few items we can go back to. Um, zero would be great, but I think that might be I don't know. It's a little tough, but we can try a few other things. Uh, Dave Motherway. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, I, I echo the thanks to the Board of Education. Uh, I think it's a tremendous start. I would like to um, see what we can do to maintain flat, right? Uh, my sense is, is uh, what I don't know as a rookie here what the, the timing is. Um, I think that we have as you so eloquently described as every five days things are dramatically different um so it, flat to me is seems like a, a good way to go um and if the in the sewer being in part of that because it's, it's absolutely required right everyone's going to need that um and we set the mill rate and the taxes based on that being included what I don't have a good understanding of is, is when that could or would be um, rolled out to bond, what that does from a flexibility standpoint for the Board of Finance and others, um, where we might be able to go back in and do some things. So um, those pieces of kind of the puts and takes, I don't have clear visibility to um, yet, but uh, looking forward to supporting it. My, my goal would be flat or zero if, if at all possible. Thank you, Dave. Um, I will offer my comments. I think at this point we've done a good job to cut almost $1.1 million in expenses out of the budget. Um, we had a luxury last year, we don't have this year, which was $3 million of undesignated fund balance that we could spend down to offset mill rate increases. Um, so we are actually decreasing at this point the budget year on year but increasing the taxes because we don't have the undesignated fund balance. Additionally, as Mike said, we do have a large $1.1 million worth of SIP for the WPCA that we need to undertake that is in there and that's driving a lot of that 3% in the taxes coming up. So I think um, 
I, I probably agree more with with Mike and with Deb that I don't. Uh, well, I want to get to. I'd love to get to a zero percent mill rate increase. Um, not having the undesignated fund balance to help offset that, I think we might be artificially low in five days from now. I don't know. We might we might need to cut a heck of a lot more than we have already. So I think with the bouncing ball we've got now. Um, I'd be hesitant to get too far out over our skis, to use a different analogy, um, and trying to lean forward to, to look of where we anticipate it to go. I think 10 days, 15, 20 days ago, a month ago, none of us anticipated being where we are now. That's not to say the trajectory isn't going to keep going the same way, but it, it also may flatten out some. And that's from the coronavirus to the economy, we're all hoping this, this trajectory flattens out some. Um, so I'd be a little more willing to take a little more risk short term uh, and then see how the public reacts to it and come back. Given all the discussion, I think we probably ought to go back through and I will take suggestions. Uh, Mike is correct. We did have items to go back to that we had agreed upon to revisit once we had some better numbers. And I'll start with the first two that I have highlighted, which was page 37, lines two and three, under the Finance Department tab. Tim, Tim, yep. it's Lynn. Can I interrupt you for a second and ask you a question? Sure. When we had a Board of Finance meeting a couple of months ago and we issued guidance, I believe guidance was um, uh, basically a 0% increase to the Board of Ed and two and a half percent kind of total for the budget. When you, when we did that, I was talking about mill rate. What were you talking about? Or well, what was everyone else talking about? So, yeah, that was in the last Board of Finance because Deb and um, Bob and Dave were not on at that point. They were either watching or uh, listening to the participation. Um, it was not clarified as to whether that was mill rate or expense. Um, I took that more as mill rate uh, and try and looking at the overall to, uh, sorry, I apologize. I said it the wrong, I said it backwards because I don't have my notes in front of me. I was taking that as expense and mill rate trying to minimize as low as we can the effect on taxes uh, and try and keep the expenses down. At that point also not having an idea what was going on with the grand list, how that would affect the mill rate, um, that makes it a hard target from a Board of Finance standpoint to look at from that aspect. Okay, because for me, prior to the coronavirus, I assumed it was going to be what was going to be reflected in people's actual tax bills, which means bill rate, right? So, um, because their valuations aren't going to change. Uh, so, if that was what we were issuing for guidance then, before, you know, we're arguably going to be looking at high double digits of unemployment locally here and whatnot, how, why does that not still hold? Well, well Pete, go ahead, you want to go ahead, Mike? Sorry, sorry I was just going to say, I, mean, I fully understand what you're saying. I, I guess, uh, you know, if I think about it, though, as we're issuing guidance to, you know, either the first selectman uh, or, or, or to, the, to the Board of Ed, um, I mean, really what, what they can control are, are the expenses, not, not, not I mean, you know, the, 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 they individually can't control the, 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 the total net mill rate. I mean, that, that, that's a factor of, of, of other, other items, such as our utilization of uh, fund balance in, in, in the prior year, et cetera. So um, I, I guess I, yeah, I probably saw it the way Tim did, which is the guidance we issued was probably, you know, realistically had to have been, I think, expense guidance, uh, how you would divide up that and adjust for it uh, across the different, you know, the mill rate across different groups, I'm not sure. But, uh, so I, I guess, yeah, and, and where we are now is, again, uh, to reiterate, if, if I heard Jim okay. properly, we're actually looking at a reduction in expenses year over year. Um, so, and again, I'm not, I, 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 I said it in the beginning, I'll say it again, I, I, let, let's go back to the couple items that we flagged, but to, to truly have a 0% increase in taxes year over year, is going to be a pretty substantial reduction in expenditures, uh, negative numbers for both, I would assume, the town and the Board of Ed. Uh, You'd have to cut another $2 million. There we go. <laughs> okay, that, and, and I appreciate that. That's the number that we're looking for, that to, to get to a, to get to a, a zero uh, increase, we have to cut an additional $2 million off of this budget, Jim? 
zero increase in, in, in tax percentage. Yes. And what would, what would that be? So we've already decreased. We've already we've already decreased the budget 1.1 million. We would have to decrease it enough to get to that zero increase. We would have to cut another two million from this budget. Right. Two million forty four. Yes. And, and what would that? All right. And and that may be, that may be again. I you know I mean again that's an, an ideal and I, I I but but that you know that may that may not be possible but certainly but, it's something that we should. Ex let me we let should, let me consider, let. But that, um, that, that, that it's helpful having that number. Bob, let me let Mike Feuerbach finish his thought. Also, please, thanks. Yeah. So I just with, with that reduction, Jim. What what does that translate into in terms of an actual expense reduction for? the various departments and the board, but not individually, but in total, what would that be as, as an expenditure reduction for uh, for the, the, the town? Well, it would be the, the, the current 1 million, well, 1.1 1 .1 million reduction plus another 2 million 44,000 on top of that. So, so what is that but, as a reduction you, versus the prior year? Uh, pardon? What is that as an expense reduction versus the prior year on a percentage basis? So that is that a three percent reduction year over year expenses or? Oh, um, sit, hold on. And I guess what I'm what I'm getting at while you're doing that math, Jim, is is if if, if that's really where we wanted to be, zero percent increase in taxes, then whatever number whatever percentage Jim tells us in a moment ago is probably what we needed to guide the town departments and the board of ed to do. Um, well, yes, wait a minute, though. Wait, hold on, because a lot of that increase from last year was in SIP because we spent savings to do it. So if you look at it from an operating budget perspective, it's a different scenario. Yeah, yeah, level yeah, funded. yeah, yeah. I, I guess I'm being all-inclusive. So, yeah. you know, we, we have been, well, but we've been overspending from the point of view of the true, you know, tax consequence to people uh, for the last couple of years, or at least the last two years I've been watching this. So when you look at actually zero funding something, strip that out for what we spent cash on because that was, you know, that was set. was an operating budget. Oh, yeah, yeah. So when you look at it that way, it's not really taking $2 million out of it. Where that, that's a net, including the SIP and the savings that we spent, um, I would still submit unwisely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I, 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 yeah, I, was, I was thinking inclusive of, of, of SIP. Uh, but I guess one of the things that probably we're learning through this process right now is, is when we give guidance in the future, we probably need to be very clear about what, what does that truly reflect? Uh, yeah, uh, well, is it yeah. inclusive of SIP, et cetera? But, but Jim, do you have that, that, that percent? Yes, that would, overall, it would be an overall decrease of 4.27%. That would be a cut of $3,141,000. What would it be just on an operating budget basis, Jim? I know it's, you, you can take your time to figure that out. You have the data to do it, but. I mean, if we took that $2 million out of the. No, no, no. Forget the $2 million. What, what would be the, if we level funded, it, it doesn't matter. It's all coming. It's all SIP. That's what it all is because we've been on a SIP binge for the last couple of years. So it's just to me, it's disingenuous to say that the, we'd have to take that much out of the budget to get to the same place because we do the savings to pay for it. So it's almost like we borrowed money. Right, so I don't think it's as I don't think it's as big a dislocation to have a zero funded budget or a level budget, both municipal say and education or whatever else you want to throw in there, um, when you strip SIP out of it. Not going to make that much difference. Well, I actually, Mr. I think, Chairman, hang on one second, Glenn. Let me just go through this because I'm looking at the numbers. The, Jim, correct me if I'm wrong. I think right now we're looking at 2.6 million in SIP for the town with the sewer in it and 559995 for the Board of Ed. Is that our total SIP budget? Uh, the total bu SIP budget at the ball cost is $2,920. Of that, 559995 is Board of Ed. The town's portion is Two million three hundred and forty thousand dollars. Two million three hundred and forty dollars for the town of which 40, one point two million three hundred and forty thousand one hundred and twenty five dollars. One twenty five, okay. Of which roughly one point one is the sewers, right? Correct. 
So if we're looking at two million dollars, uh, what? Yeah, I see what Lynn is saying. I, I appreciate that we had had bigger budgets. I think we're pretty low right now. Um, I think what I, I and I see what she's saying about the operating budget. If we could look at operating's year on year, are they um, pretty close to level funded? A percentage point higher. Where where do you think they are? And maybe you can, is that going to take you a little time, and we can go through some of the other items or. Overall, general government overall, um, not including debt service, is at 5.35% increase. It's, a, it's actually one point, almost a $1.2 million increase in general operations. Okay. And then Word of Ed is, uh, what, 0 0.7? Yeah, 0 0.7, or on my spreadsheet it shows it's 1.03, but I'm going off of the number before we did the additional appropriation for, or we gave them back the $145,000 in uh, gotcha. ECS. So, yeah, that's, that's your number is good, that percentage of 0.07. Okay. So does that provide members an idea of where we're at? Mr. Frischman, uh, I'm sorry, you had a comment I was asking. Well, I just another way to look at this. The value of a mill is about <clears throat> two point eight million. So a half a mill is about one point four million. The mill rate is what the taxpayer sees because that's what the bill is based on. If we look at it that way, when Member Young is right, it's largely SIP. You know, we have to do the sewers because those toilets got to flush. Now, if we think a little bit longer, should a bond be executed if it even can be you know and at such time if we uh, conserve some of those resources we can then redirect that into undesignated fund balance for a future year to improve our cash position because i think the dislocation is is going to be very real but it's just another way to look at it other comments from board of ed members but again, just to clarify, to get to that, to get to that flat increase of the budget we currently have, we need to, we would need to reduce another two million forty-four thousand from from the current budget. We would have to find within this budget two million forty-four thousand to decrease. Is that accurate? To, to have a zero percent tax increase, yes. Okay. And that, that, I guess, the, the decrease, the year-over-year -year decrease on the budget, the $1.1 million decrease in the, in the, in the entire budget year-over-year -year appears to be primarily based on, on a decrease in the SIP rather than either operating budget. Well, actually, that, that service decreased by 850000 as well. Right. Okay, which is there we go. Okay. That service has a name, but there wasn't a, there wasn't a significant decrease in the SIP, SIP projects as well. Okay, thank you. So, um, Chair, Mr. Chairman, it's Lynn again. Um, I realize that we don't have to declare anything tonight, uh, but I would like to get a revised from what we've done for these deliberations, uh, you know, new budget from Mr. Sullivan, and then um, I would personally like to crack a bunch of numbers on it to see myself what's what because we don't have to decide anything until the hearing assuming we even have one well, correct? well no we do have to decide because we have to put a budget out which can be revised post the hearing but we have to put out a suggested budget that the select people selectmen put out to the public as this is what is suggested by the Board of Finance at this time and date. Um, so we do actually have to come to a consensus of where we're going to wind up tonight, which still can be modified after the public hearing, but we do need to put a recommendation out that can be published, budget books made up, and submitted to the public for review and, uh, and input. Okay. Then I, I would like to go over other elements in this budget if we could and trim it more. All right, given that, I'll go back. One of the items we wanted to review was page 37 under the finance department, lines two and three. Do 
Jim, Jim Sullivan, can you remind members where line two and line three currently stand? Uh, line two is, would be a new position, Deputy Director of Finance, at a hundred thousand, one hundred thousand fifty-six dollars, and line three would be is the current senior accountant position, which would actually have a cut over prior year, seventy-six thousand dollars to backfill the. Uh, that position would be vacated by the deputy director of finance, so that would be have to be backfilled at eighty-five thousand dollars. So, in current budget line two, in the budget, in the numbers you just presented for the for the mill rate, line two has a hundred thousand fifty-six dollars, and line three eighty-five thousand. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, I'd open up to members for discussion on this point, as we agreed we would. Anyone want to make any comments? Mr. Chairman, while I realize that there is certainly a, uh, a need, I am reluctant to fund it in this year. I would recommend increasing, putting back the $7,800 for the present senior account, and then uh, table until next year creation of the assistant director. Um, sir. I agree. Lynn, I think you said you agreed. Yeah, I'm sorry. I turned away. I, I do agree. So it's my, the, 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 the piece that I, I heard the other night that, that, that I think is important is, is the, the overlap in, in uh, and, and it is an expected transition, and, and it sounds like for a period of time, and uh, you can see the value of doing this, that, 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 that we want to we wanna maybe hire someone in advance but before we lose the other colleague. So um, I'm a little fuzzy how that math would all pl play out, uh, but, but um, it's, 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 so I guess, I, and maybe Jim, you can help, help clarify, uh, uh, but I, I, I would, you know, I'd be interested in what that, that transition might be. Well, the overlap would be for six months that the, uh, the new senior accountant would be here while the uh, deputy finance director would be here six months and then she would leave at end of December. But that doesn't mean the position goes away at that point. The position still needs to be filled for entire year. Just because one deputy director is leaving, the work still has to get done. It's a matter of having to let people get to work. At a time, a new deputy director. So we're talking, sorry, sorry Jim, just clarify, December 20th of the following year? No, December 31st of this year is okay. is a approximate exit date for a current senior account. Mr. Chairman, has, uh, one question. Has the present incumbent in the senior accountant position formally stated or put in her notice to retire at that date? In uh, writing? No. Did you hear the answer, Glenn? The, the answer? Yes, I did. Okay. I appreciate all of this. And Jim, I know you need this person. And I'm not supporting it for this year for one simple reason, which is the people who are going to wind up getting paychecks are uh, public union workers because taxes are going to pay them. And the people who have to pay those taxes are going to be the ones who are going to suffer, in my opinion, beyond belief. $7 trillion is gone from the stock market, and they are going to lose jobs at a rate that has never, ever been seen before. And to ask them to support stuff that, is, that, that can be worked around, I can't do it. And I know you need it, and I want to give it to you, but I can't support it. How do other members feel? Well, I, I think I asked this question, I'll ask it one more time, just because it did seem to me like it could be a possibility, but uh, 
or if I think about how I handle certain things and <laughs> where I work, you know, we, we, we sometimes will go in a contracted position for a period of time to get through a hump or, um, or a part-time role. Uh, I think Jimmy said that that's just not possible, but that, that versus nothing at all really, really isn't a better option. Uh, better than nothing at all, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> And this is David Motherway. Um, Jim, I'm just trying to make sure I understand this. The, the current person in the role, you believe, intends to retire December 31st. Yes. Um, and, and what we're looking at here in lines one and two is a replacement of that role and another position. Right. You know, actually, you don't have to think about it in terms of retirement. Just think, think about it as adding a new position. Really, that's the bottom line. If the person's retiring or not, I was just going to add a new position. I think he's a new position. That simplifies it. Were you able to hear that? Uh, Jim, you cut out a little bit towards the end there. Could you restate that, please? Yeah. Uh, you should think about this in terms of that person retiring. I think um, you're getting caught up on the six months and half a year. What I'm asking for is a position because we need a position, a, a new position for the whole year, whether this person retires or not. Yeah, and Jim, that was actually specifically why I, why I was asking my question is because um, I, I do agree with. Um, member Young, um, her sentiment on, on, on the roles, et cetera. Just trying to figure out if, if we were to choose one of the two positions, would it be a replacement of the current position or, right, and it sounds to me you need that replaced. Um, and, and that would be what I, what I would support and recommend. Yes, that, that position can't go away. I just thought, Statue, and I guess I guess I have a question to 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 reflect our support of of you ultimately having that position. Would it be worthwhile to put the the current senior accountant into the deputy director of finance um, position and leave the senior accountant position vacant for you know for 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 this fiscal year, um, or perhaps be able to do some sort of uh, you know as, as Mike was saying, you know, do some something to, to reflect um, filling that in some sort of part time again to get over the hump. But would would creating that position and allowing her to fill that position at that w wage while leaving the senior accountant position vacant would th would that in any way at least move us in the right direction? No, we can't leave that position uh, vacant because it's a union position and we we have to fill it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Jim, do you have any other ideas on how to work this with us? Do you have any suggestions on it? The, the only feasible option, if I understand you correctly, is to cut the, the new position. But what I would like to do then would be to, what I would like to do then would be to um, add a half a position to the senior accountant line item so we could bring in, we'd have two senior accountants call A and B for that six month period. And then when the senior A leaves, we have B left to the rest of the year. Thank you. What do you think that would, would cost, Jim? Well, um, start with the 85,000. Let's we'll talk about if the just a senior person, to re, senior account to remain the same person there. That position, I, I, I dropped that down to 85, thinking it would be a new position. Her salary last year was 92,647. I would actually like to bring her up to um, top level of her A grade, which is $95,056. 
So I'd, I'd have to add ten thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars back to that flight item, just to get her to where I think she deserves to be, and then add another half of a incoming position, which would be actually never mind. I'd get her up to ninety five oh five six and fund that for half a year at forty seven thousand five hundred twenty eight dollars. And then I would have a new person come in for the full year at $82,112. So that would be a total for that line item of $129,640. But we don't even know if, this, if Barbara's going to retire. Um, after tonight, I think that it'll be clear that she is. I don't, what, what do you mean after this discussion? <laughs> after this discussion, I think I think a decision will be made. All right. Well, we can wait for that decision too, I guess. Yep. Okay. I, mean, I don't want to speak to her, put words in her mouth, but well, people might feel differently when they start looking at their four hundred one k's and other stuff. You know, perhaps. Yep. Lynn, maybe just to add to what Jim was saying, just to clarify a bit, I think the just and I completely appreciate what everybody is saying about needing to, to be um, very budget conscious this year, but just to say the finance department, I'd say similar to the assessor's department, is just very overworked, and I think people are burning out um, because of the intense workload sustained over years. So, you know, we're so grateful for the DPW position and some help with human services. Um, for finance, I'd say, and assessors, even though we're not asking for it this year for assessors, are two other departments that are just significantly under-resourced and overworked. So, Jim, that, was that line three, then, you'd be proposing, uh, or the need would be 129,640, so basically an increase of 45,000, is, is that correct? Yeah, yep, yep. Right. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Glenn. This is Glenn Frischman. Can can we create we can create a line for uh, uh, te uh, temporary finance support or technical support for finance under the finance department in the event we need to get contract someone in the or to to help with the immediately with the workload should something unexpected happen so maybe we should put twenty five or thirty grand in a financial technical support line within the finance department as a contingency, that's less than a full-time position, but it could give you to get someone out of 1099 uh, to, uh, to help out in the event that we need something. I could agree with that, because it keeps us out of the other benefits part of it in case someone doesn't retire. Although it was sounding like... Uh Again, if I was following this properly, that it would be thirty-five thousand, let's say, in that that temp line, uh, and then still another ten needed for what Jim was wanting to do up in the salary section. Is that correct, Jim? Sorry, say that again, Mike. You you would you would need about ten mil. Sorry, ten mil. <laughs> the thirty fives are numbers. Uh, <laughs> um, you, you would need another ten thousand. Up in the salaries line to do what you're doing, needing, needing, or wanting to do, uh, and then you need maybe another thirty-five thousand in a in a attempt staffing or professional line uh, for for the, the part-time role. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, we, yeah. I would need ten ten thousand to line to line three to get to yeah. senior count where I think she should. Sure. So I'll, I guess I'll, I'll formally put that on the table then uh, uh, for, for, for a yay or an A. <laughs> so you're, you're, what you're suggesting, just, just so that I'm clear about it, is adjusting line three up by $10,000 to $95,000 yeah. and then adding a line for um, technical help or technical assistance. Financial technical support. Right. Yeah. Got, got that one. Uh, for financial technical support um, and populate that line at $35,000. And, and then zero out line two. And zero out line two. Reduce that, eliminate that 100000 
Okay, I'm sorry, was that uh, the fin financial technical support, was that 25000 or 35000 35000 35000 Perhaps okay. you get Linda Savitsky to fill in. Okay, we're not going to talk about people specific. We're talking about budget only here. Um, I appreciate the input, though. Um, I will go down and just check how people feel about that. Uh, Mr. Frischman, we have the proposal to take line three, the senior accountant, increase it to $95,000 and add a technical line for a line for technical financial assistance for $35,000 and eliminate line two. I concur. Uh, Lynn Young? Lynn? Did we lose Lynn? Can you hear me? Oh, there you are. I said I'm not enthusiastic, but I'll agree for now. Ringing endorsement. Uh, Bob, <laughs> Bob Statchen? Hi, uh, yeah, Bob Satchin. I concur with that. Deb? I concur. D David? David Motherway concurs. Okay, Jim, can you take line two on page 37 and bring that to zero? Uh, take line three and bring it to $95,000. And then add a line for the technical help for the finance department for $35,000. Okay, John. Thank you, Jim. All right. Um, where do we want to go next? next uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir, Mr. Frischman. Glenn, I have uh, a public request, a suggestion to reduce on page 90, line 100, to a dollar. Page 90? Okay, so we're... Page 90, line 100. That is titled uh, Greenway Proposal. Oh, I got more to go and sit. People go in there now? I wasn't finished with the operating. Let, let's stay with operating for right now and try and work through that um, first, please. Um, Happy to concur. So, speaking, speaking for myself, I would cut the half of the, whatever it was, the half of the rec um, addition in human services. I think human services is going to need money for other things. Uh, but I don't know where that is. Page eight. Oh, there it is. Five. Uh, so page eighty-five, I believe that's line twenty-nine. Yeah. Leanne, are you on the on the line? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, could you just speak to what that might do for you if you were to lose that halftime? Well, I, you know, in, in the state that we're in right now, and as everyone's been saying, when this budget was developed, um, we weren't going through what our nation is going through right now, let alone our state and our town. So, um, you know, we were hopeful for this position because we have a lot of ways that we want to grow within the recreation division of our department. Um, that being said, this position would also generate a revenue stream for the town, which would go back into our infrastructure. Uh, but I, like, I'm very cognizant, like I said, of what's going on right now and that tough decisions need to be made. And if we could put that off for a year, um, I, I would understand. Thank you. Uh, how do members feel about the suggestion? Glenn Fishman, I concur. Sorry, it was, it was Mike. I just want to clarify one thing with Leanne. Um, so, Leanne, uh, I, I guess you're feeling that, given the environment, that uh, it would, would be unlikely that you'd have the same revenue generation from, from that, that position. Is, is that part of why you're feeling that? Well, that's that correct. Important? I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. it's really, like I said, it's so hard now with everything going on. All of our programs and services are basically with it, within that division. 
um, on hold, and, yeah. and we've canceled everything through the end of April. That being said, if we were back up fully running and functional, I, I guarantee that that position would generate um, what I had promised in the budget presentation, which would be probably the commitment from the town and, and maybe even more so. Um, but in the climate we're in right now, I'm completely understanding of the tough decisions that need to be made. And, and if we could revisit that next fiscal year, I would appreciate that. Thank you, Leanne, because I'd like to give it to you, but I also want to have some money left over in case we've got food security issues well, I, and how this is going to turn out. And that's another piece of this as well. We, we receive $30,000 in general assistance each year, and we haven't needed to ask for any appropriations to increase that during the course of the fiscal year. That being said, I'm getting messages from my colleagues in the community today that the PNC is extremely short on food donations already, and we are only day three into our kind of official shutdown. So um, I'm also very aware of that when I'm having this conversation and decisions and conversations that we, we may need to have with the Board of Finance as we move through this. So, And that's what I, exactly what I am worried about. Right. I concur with you, Justin. Leanne, if, if we were to cut that halftime position, do you have a dollar value we should take out of there? If we were to cut, it was actually a full-time position. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. 36,904? Yeah. It would be it would be the full amount at this point. Okay. It was a full-time position. That, that number would be 32,760. Thirty-two seven sixty. Uh, so Glenn, Mike, Lynn, Bob, Statchen, how do you feel about it? I I, I concur and, and greatly appreciate Leanne's uh, flexibility and and working with the board like this. It, it is I think I, I participate in a lot of the rec programs on both with my kids and, and as, a, as a coach. It's a, it's a great program. I, it would be nice, and certainly I'll be looking forward to hearing about being able to do this in the years to come. But thanks so much for your flexibility. Absolutely. Thank you. Deb. I concur. And thank you, Leanne. Dave Motherway. I <laughs> echo Bob Statchen's con uh, comments exactly. Thank you, Leanne. Concur. Welcome. Thank you. All right, Jim, take line 29 on page 85 down to $32,760. Not down to. It, that would be, that's what I'm taking out. The rating figure would be $40,968. $4,968. Okay. $40,968. Correct. Oh, okay. I was looking at the fully loaded wage, not just that salary line. Okay. I got it now. Okay. Um, do board members, while we're staying in the operating budget for now, have additional things to discuss? This one's for you. Um, how do we know from like previous lines? There's all these line item transfers that come through from departments and whatnot uh, across the board. How do we know how much unspent money these departments have in the aggregate from prior years' budgets? They have no unspent money in prior years' aggregate. Their appropriations lapse at year end unless they are encumbered. Okay, they have, they have to be encumbered. Have to be encumbered. And by, okay, and encumbered means literally contractually, legally encumbered. Can't get out of them. No, I mean? no, it doesn't mean that. It means that encumbrance in municipal terms, actually, it, it's, um, it's really one of the bases of, a, of accounting for municipalities, which is budget, budgetary accounting. They allow you, if you can identify a need and you get a, a, a purchase order out, by year end, they allow you to actually take services, receive services and goods in a succeeding 
budget year, charge them back to the, uh, the prior year. It's it's an effort to uh, for budget smoothing. No, I understand what it is. Gatsby's got the same thing. But uh, I guess what I'm asking is more of a practical question. Maybe it's to Danielle. Um, sort of like I was saying uh, when we were having the Board of Ed discussion, mm -hmm. is if there's if anything in this budget year doesn't have to be spent, then we find it and not spend it. That, oh, yes, that's, that's correct. So I actually have, um, you don't have this, it's, it's below total budget, uh, budget summary, but I'm estimating uh, surplus in expenditures of one hundred forty-eight thousand dollars for the year. You cut out one hundred and what? One hundred forty-eight thousand. Okay, and that theoretically could be used to defer next year's tax increase if it held true. No, it'll drop into fund balance. You, you still have to. Yeah, we haven't had a conversation about that yet, though, and whether or not we're going to use any of it, right? We have not, correct? Because we don't have much fund balance, right? Jim, what is the level of the undesignated fund balance currently, and what's above two-month operating? Currently, as of 6:30, 19, it was 16,500,000. Jim, I can't, I can't hear you. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I moved my microphone. Uh, as of 6:30, it was 16,533,677. The two months reserve is twelve million five hundred and twenty thousand two hundred and ninety nine dollars. And so the top line of that was a projection for year end or no? Yes, that's a, that's a projection. Okay. Can we, so let's write that number down someplace. And that would include that 148? No, it would not. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm projecting as of 630-2020. Uh, no, as of 630-2020, I'm projecting... A fund balance of fourteen million two hundred fifty-one thousand one hundred ninety-one dollars. Say that again, Jim. You cut out in the middle of it. As of six thirty, twenty twenty, I'm projecting a uh, um, fund balance of fourteen million two hundred fifty-one thousand one hundred ninety-one dollars. And say again what the two months operating was. The two months reserve on that fourteen million would be. Twelve million five hundred twenty thousand two hundred ninety nine dollars. Okay. And that's inclusive of all bills paid for the Stillman Avenue mail and all that stuff, right? Yes. Okay. Anybody else got anything in the operating budget? Because you're making me look bad. Does anyone have anything, Mr. Most? Chairman? No. Okay, well, let's move to Schedule C, please. I got some stuff. Go ahead and start, Lynn. Uh, is the chief still here? Yes, I am. Hi. Um, so the four cars, I recognize the importance to you, but I also know we just wrecked one, right? So we're getting a new one effectively at the beginning of a fiscal year. Can we get rid of one car for this year, given the circumstances? Well, they, they don't give us the full value of the car, unfortunately. That's, a, that's a, going to probably be a different discussion down the road. I think we just got in the uh, estimate on the replacement which uh, is probably below the cost of going out to buy a new one. 
Um, I, I, if, if I could respectfully ask if you could look, I believe you skipped over the technology fund last night, and it was 20 grand in that. Yeah, I've got that circle too. <laughs> right. I, I would respectfully clip that first if you could, because the cars are just, okay. as you can tell, so important. Okay. And, and if we have to get rid of the cameras, we'll get rid of the cameras too. But the, my main priority is those cars because that's how you get to the calls and that's how you get to the people and everything that goes on with that. Okay. Um, you can live without the technology upgrade for you? Uh, it's it, it's I mean, been a savior for so many different ways. But if, you know, like everybody's saying, we're in extraordinary time so if we have to do something like that we'll have to do something didn't we already so reduce that, that to would 10? Be... sorry it's mike speaking Did, didn't we reduce that to ten thousand already is that correct mm, line 14. no this is that was this oh. is line two eleven line eleven okay i thought we were saying zero that out and then i thought lynn jumped to, to line 14 but uh, the for, chief well, did. Lynn was looking at line 11 for right now. All right. Well, actually, the chief pointed me there. Right. Um, we, we would make it a dollar. Because obviously we got to... I'm you from the cars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, I know. <laughs> I appreciate it. All right, how do members feel about taking line 11 down on the SIP on page 88 down to one dollar. Agreed. Agreed. Cool. Yeah, I don't concur. concur. Dave. Dave, by the way, thank you, Chief. I concur. Jim, p please take line 11, the technology upgrade on page 88 down to one dollar. Got it. Danielle, yeah, do you want me to be quiet? What? No, I'm sorry. I thought Tim told me to be quiet. No, yeah. I was I was muttering to myself that I had too many numbers here on top of other numbers. So, go please go ahead, Lynn. Well, you should see my budget book. It wounded me and created a flesh wound with a paper cut. I can't describe. It. <laughs> Maybe it's trying to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> Danielle? Yes? Townwide can, uh, no, 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 hold on. The, uh, where was I? Never mind, I'm gonna, well, that one. I, Public Works. If we're going Go ahead. After, I have a reverse one. You have a reverse one? Yeah. What, what do you have, Danielle? So line item, both line item three and four, when I went back to staff were understandably, you know, concerned and upset. I think three, you know, one more year we can wait on. But line four, I just wanted to draw to attention that this this is not operational. They'll have to outsource this. It's not really you know a glossy item, but it, it's just a necessity of work for the assessors department and planning and zoning. So they can't just not do these um, for zoning meetings, for customers who come in for assessors maps. So they will have to spend this outsource, which will likely cost you know, the same, if not more. So I wanted to draw that attention to line four. That's the twenty five thousand. Well, if we outsource it, it comes for customers. I don't understand why they're not paying for it. It's all it's for like the assessors need it for their own work when it's a reval year. And then Marcia said she probably does forty maps internally that cost about fifty dollars printing, sometimes eighty nine and it was multiple pages. And then Keith uses them for the planning and zoning meetings monthly. He um, and they've been having to run out like the staff and do it, which is also a lack of efficiency for the staff going out to go outsource and print these things. So um, that was their request of, of all the SIP items that they really felt should go back in. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Glenn Fershman, uh, I would propose including the 25 for the large copier, the line 14 surveillance cameras, if we reduce that by that amount, then we can keep things neutral. Because those are the, Chief, are those the dash cams? We, we already we did. Already brought we already, already took it down. Yeah. That, that's a 10,000 right there. We could take yeah. your 10. Yeah. 
we already reduced that, so what the chief said was the minimum. Uh, so kind of keep that going. Yeah, so just re recapping, line 14 we had already reduced to $10,000, which in discussion with the chief was the minimum we could do to keep that program operational at a, at a minimal level. I don't necessarily want to offer this up, but I feel like it's coming anyways. Um, it would only half offset it, but I know line 100, the Pocketuck River Greenway phase one, the 10,000 was a great gesture of signifying investment in the downtown area. But since we'll likely not be able to do much with that this year, um, we could consider that for the practicality of a large format copier, which sounds depressing even saying out loud. Yeah, yeah, it's probably gone. Yeah. Well, it sounds like the more practical yeah, we should, thing to do. We should complete the offset with line 87 on page 90. Oh, no, no. <laughs> that was tricky. Wait. Climate change. <laughs> <laughs> We could, I mean, um, the other option we can seriously consider is, you know, some towns are moving to more digital, but as we're seeing, there are challenges and investments that have to be made. So, for example, planning and zoning meetings, we've talked about moving to the district office. They have laptops supported that they've offered to share. But then again, there there be some investment and upgrades to be able to make that so anyone coming can present and then do it that way so the zoning members don't need everything printed out for them. Um, there'd still be some day-to-day -day things that would have to be outsourced, but again, you know, we're, if you want us to keep it a dollar and come back to you with some options before April 9th, but just to flag, this is just a practical day-to-day -day need as of now for what goes on in the office. I, 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 I mean, it sounds like there's a, there's a practical need, to, and I'll admit I, I misunderstood what that that, yeah. that copier line was all about. Uh, so, I, 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 if Danielle's willing to move that one or wants to make that one 25 and reduce the other, eliminate the 10 uh, from line 100, I would support that. I agree. Um, wait, what did you say, Mark? So go ahead and make line, uh, where are we? Line four would go, be reinstated to 25,500 from $1, and line 100 would be taken from 10,000 down to $1. Oh, okay. Danielle? Is that an accurate number? Yeah. So I have on numerous occasions availed myself of that broken machine. And since it broke, I've been forced to go to other places to do it. And I have to w wonder why it is we charge half of what those other places do to the public. Okay, will you write that up for me? We can, I can look into that. Yeah, I'd like to double the charge. Okay. The public. I'm good with that. <laughs> and is this an accurate? Uh, I think okay. okay, great. Okay, how do members feel about changing line four back to 25,500 and taking line 100 from 10,000 down to one dollar. Mr. Frischman? I concur. Mr. Feuerbach? I proposed it so I concur. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Ms. Young? Yes. Mr. Stachin? Yep, I concur. Deb? Agree. Dave, Dave Motherway? David Motherway concurs. Jim, could you please take line four in the sip of page 88 and restore that to $25,500? Yes. On now? Uh, hang on, I'm waiting to get confirmation from Jim. Oh. Jim, Jim Sullivan, you there? I'm sorry, if my, my microphone is I restated the uh, format printer, large format printer. Okay, and then take line 100, the pocket of Greenway, from 10,000 down to $1, please. 
Fine. Thank you, Jim. Go ahead, Lynn. Um, line 26, the ADA Public Works Transition Plan. I'd like to put that down to a dollar because there is nobody coming after us this year for that. Uh, I, I'll just say that we're going to, to state that maybe we take it down to a dollar because of current economic systems, not due to how you said it. Well, no, what I mean by... Yeah, okay. yeah I know what you mean. Okay. Uh, how do members feel about taking the ADA transition plan down to a dollar? Page 88, line 26. What are we at right now? Sorry. 25,000. 25, David Motherway concurs. Bob? Uh, Bob Statton, I concur. I concur. I'm going to be the lone no on this one. Sorry. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I, I feel like, I, I mean, we could, we could take everything down to a dollar at some point, right? Um, and, and I think. I'm for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and not that I want to necessarily utilize fund balance, but, but uh, you know. Um, you know, I, I think it is potentially a lever that, 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 that we have, and, and uh, um, you know, if we, uh, if we're not if we're not showing progress. I think in some of these areas, uh, I, I, I worry. But uh, but I'm, I, I, I'll, I'll I'll stop because I know I know I've lost the vote. <laughs> um, okay, you know, actually, I would I'll I'll vote no with you because I think we should. <laughs> be continuing on that okay. but I also know that we've already lost that vote so Jim could you get a line 26 please on the sip on page 88 and take that down to one dollar mr. chairman this is David Motherway just a, a question understanding our situation um, we are you know I'll use line 26 and I understand both you and member Farback's vote um, Will we go back as a board of finance after and then reprioritize in the event that we are um, able to bond the sewer? Right, so basically prioritize where we might backfill. So once, let's, let's we'll do scenarios here and I'll, I'll describe it best that way. Once we go through the budget, present something to the selectmen, they send it out to the public, let's assume that it passes, okay? then the selectmen own the budget. We can offer insight and work with them, which has happened in the past. We are in extraordinary times, so I wouldn't say what's been the norm in the past is the norm going forward, but in the past, I would say there is a very collaborative manner between all departments and the Board of Finance trying to look at how things are accomplished and where monies are moved. Uh, Jim Sullivan plays a key role in that, looking at the finances. So. I think that the input from the Board of Finance in this situation would be very welcome, but I don't think that it is something I can say blanketly has hap happened in the past because we haven't faced these pressures recently. Is that you good with that? Mr. Chairman, if I can add something. Go ahead, Jim. I, I, this might help help answer the question a bit too. Um, if that. 1.1 million for WPCA is in this SIP, and the budget passes. It passes in the budget. It's it's it's, it's fixed in there. You can still go ahead later on, and bond for that project, and then if you do, are able to pass that bond, get that, that those, those pieces into that bond, you can then reprogram that money at a later date. Would line item transfer to the Board of Finance. That's what we would hope to do. And, but there is a time delay, correct, Jim? Six, six months, yes, after adoption of the budget. So you're looking at end of year before any transfers would happen? Correct. Um, Barbara, are you still there? Yes. Could we live with uh, pushing the pocket top? Pump house fire suppression line thing to the next year? Um, yeah, if we, 
we can talk to the Army Corps, and I'm, I'm sure they will, and, and under these circumstances, permit that. If they're not too busy building hospitals, yes. Yeah. Um, what line is that, Lynn? That's line 50. And I, so I would propose we did that, send it to a dollar for 50 and 51, because these are things we can go back and use the super fund for, if Barbara was in agreement or had another place to cut a little. Um, no, I think we can push it off for another year. Both of them? Which one? We were saying which one? Coogan Boulevard and Parkatuck Pump House. I, I would say at this point, at this point, go ahead and proceed and push them off. And, um, and if something urgent becomes known during the fiscal year, I'll make you aware of it. And then we can make a decision on how to proceed then. Yeah, because if something urgent happens, it basically probably means we've got to replace the whole thing next year, right? Correct. It's a different issue. All right, so the proposal is take line 50 and move that to a dollar, and line 51 and move that to a dollar. Glenn, how do you feel about that? I concur. Mike? If Barbara says she's okay, I, I, I'm, I'm okay. Uh, Lynn, you proposed it, so I'm guessing you're okay. Yep. Bob Stachin? Yep, I concur. Deb? Concur. Dave Motherway? Thank you, Barbara. I concur. Jim, please take line 50 on page 89, the Pocketuck Pump House uh, fire abandonment line. Take that down to a dollar and take line 51, the Coogan Boulevard culver culvert rehabilitation, down to a dollar, please. Fine. Thank you. Um, so I have another one. Go ahead. You're in a roll. You guys are probably like. All right, so 62 and 63, the sewer stuff. All right, we've had uh, a recent problem in Pawkatuck that's a serious problem and it's probably going to have a $300,000 bill and, I don't know, a six-month wait time before we can actually fix it. So the number that we gave you was light by that amount, but I'm going to propose we drop it to an even million and take 139000 out of it, and we will either use more bubble gum or uh, find the funds in a, in a maintenance account that is about the only thing keeping us barely afloat. Which line item would you actually be taking it out of? Yeah, I don't think it really, well... Uh, Do you want to take it out of half and half, or...? Yeah, take it out of half and half. Um, Lynn, Mike, I, I'm not sure I followed the rationale there. If you're saying you're already exposed by because, 300, because we have, because I'm I'm sitting here telling everybody we've got massive sacrifices to make. Okay, we have a little cash balance. Um, it's not much, and it's not nearly enough to support the, the, you know, the scope of the operation we run. But we do have a little cash. These numbers that we gave you were are not. Um, they're not fully specced out because we need the money to even get that and whatnot, and we might be able to shave some of it, and if we can't, we can use some of those other funds. We don't have a lot of them, but I think we can probably get away with that in contemplation of the bond. And, and you would prefer to do that versus, if you recall, last night, you know, we talked about... Uh, uh, yeah. The, yeah, the, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, the reason is, is I can't go, we can't go, we can't, it's like SIP and operating is for town. We can't move money between the two, and I can't be, we can't be in a position where we can't pay our contract operator. Which could occur anyway, <laughs> given what's kind of going on. So that's, that's really not an option. So, uh, Danielle, Doug is going to hate me in the morning for offering that up, but in the spirit of sacrifices, you know, we're asking from everybody, I think we can figure out how to make that work. Oh, thank you. 
Doug well, I, I, uh, I hope we can. Well, that presupposes no new disasters, but. So, uh, what lines are those? So, so by my numbers here, splitting the 139 between the two, we would reduce line 62 to 571,500 dollars. And line 63 to 428,500 dollars. Yeah, and I assume that if we have to balance that differently, we can just do a line item transfer. That's correct after six months. Okay. I mean, I can't, I don't know why, you know, I don't know what the breakdown between those two things are, but let's, we don't have to, let's do that. And we'll check with Doug tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Sorry, Lynn, Mike here. Last comment, although, you know, if we get to the point where we're, you know, down the road we're discussing the bond, let's make sure we've got what we really need in the bond package. Yeah, I mean, understand that when we do that, we look at it from a fixed point in time, and all you have to do is sneeze, and something major goes out, and, you know, we can't really forecast that. Because we forecast, uh, we have forecasted longer life on newer equipment, and we're finding that we're getting shorter life than the stuff that's 40 years old. It should have died 20 years ago. So it's very hard for us, you know, to know uh, with any degree of certainty going out three years or whatever. But what we're trying to do with the SIP here, or rather with the bond, is to get us out of SIP for the next five, six years. That's what we're trying to do. So um, the only thing that we can kind of know for sure is stuff is starting to break at a reliable rate um, from the same kind of vintage stuff. So, you know, that's how we kind of arrive at these things. And it will allow us to be a little more uh, proactive than reactive, which is cheaper. Other questions about this line? Glenn, how do you feel about those proposed changes between those two lines? I, I concur. I, I, it worries me, but I concur. I, I have great faith in Member Young. Well, on that note, I have great faith in Member Young, too, except I do. I, I'm offering this without consulting Doug Middleton, and I'm doing it to play ball because I want to ask them to play ball, too. But if he comes back with something else that's happened that I'm unaware of since our meetings are monthly, I may have to come back prior to April 9th and adjust that again, but for now, I would like to get him to agree to that. Mike? Yep, I'm okay. Bob Statchen? Yep, I concur. Deb? Agree. Dave? David Mother, I concur. Jim, can you take line 62, the pump station rehab line, and bring that down to $571,500? Got it. And line 63, the treatment facility, please bring that down to $428,500. Got it. Okay. I just had an email from Roger Kaiser, go up to line two. General operations, and you take fifteen thousand from there. Take fifteen thousand out of that, Roger, who's sitting next to us. <laughs> Some of us. We conferred. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jim. Please take out of line two. Pr bring that down to a dollar. We'll take it. We can take it. Oh yeah, a dollar. All right. Roger's nodding his head yes at me here as I said a dollar. So yeah, let's leave a dollar in there, please. All right. Thank you, Roger. Um, I had one more thing, but I can't find it, so maybe we killed it already. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's not um, say that. Let's just say that we have adjusted it already. Okay, sorry. <laughs> My corporate budget. Mo Mr. Oh, here it is. Mr. Okay. Chairman. Uh, oh, you got, you got it, Lynn? No, go ahead, Glenn, if you please. Someone else talk. <laughs> Okay, uh, line 87, uh, you know, I, I, I don't think that the climate's going to change in a year. I'd reduce that to a dollar and save 10000 or 9999 I would like to remind the distinguished Mr. Fershman that this could impact how the bond rating agencies look at us. Um, it was a point of discussion with our AAA rating 
And since we took out the, the Willow Street and a few other projects that were kind of climate aligned, I would ask kindly the board keep the 10,000 in there. Can I counter that argument? <laughs> I, I so think. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I thought, I thought you were done. Go, go ahead, Len. Um, bond rating agencies are going to have a lot to worry about. That's not going to be one of the things per se in that line item for $10,000 particularly when we call their attention to the amount of money we have spent as a town uh, in actuality preparing for climate change on sewers and whatnot. Now, if there's another consideration that I can easily... I just feel like, some, I feel like you know, we had originally asked for 100000 We'd also wanted to consider a long-term investment fund, such as Bramford has. Obviously, all that is off the table right now. But to at least show we're consistently putting money towards infrastructure and investments. Um, I, I, I'm afraid we're doing deferred maintenance on a longer-term project problem that's going to come back to bite us. But I understand this year is unbelievably challenging, but I still feel that continuing that line item or zeroing it out that the the wrong signal, and at least having a consistency there is, is sending the right signal. I concur. It's, it's ten thousand uh, um, dollars, and I think it again sends the right message. Um, yeah, it's, it's at some point, yeah, we've got, we 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 got to we, we we can't defer everything here. Um, I understand it's a tight year. Uh, I'd rather talk about if, if we if we want to take ten thousand dollars out of fund balance, then I'm happy to have that discussion, but. But I, I think there's something to be said too for recognizing that, that you know that there are still areas that the town you know is aware are, are, are key areas that, that we have to uh, you know support at some level, you know, even if it's a minimal level, uh, knowing their criticality for the future. I have another so good reason: the MS4 stormwater requirements are coming down from the state. And this line item could absolutely be used for, for items um, that would meet that requirement. So it's a two-for-one deal. Then retitle the line MS4 Stormwater. I think um, that would be a mistake. What, what, I, uh, what is $10,000 going to do? So for $10,000, you I mean, could definitely only do bio soil. That's true. You could do bio swales what like New Haven is doing. You could do bio swales like New Haven is doing. They're rather inexpensive and they absorb a decent bit of extra water. You do them by drainage work that uh, sorry DPW is already doing. Um, and again, like we've used this reason many times that hasn't worked, but it is good for leveraging other grants. We need to show some level of a line item that we can say we're leveraging this, not to diminish the sewer work. It's very important, but something outside of sewers. I think to have that falls in the climate line item would be useful. Just, uh, Bob Statue, I, I would concur with uh, Mike um, that, that this is a this is an item that that again sends the, the message. It's a coastal community. It, it sends a message that we need, and, it, and if it creates funding opportunities, um, I think it's as Danielle stating. I think it's something that we should. Uh, um, allow her to be able to go and say that, that we are providing this, this support so that she can search out those other funding opportunities. Lynn Young, I won't have a tantrum and I'll give it to Danielle. <laughs> First day. All right, so we're going to leave line 87 at $10,000. Thank you. Lynn, did you have more? Uh, yeah, I had one other thing. Uh, the Stonington Historical Lighthouse Restoration strikes me as a want versus a need right now. That's page, that's line 142. I'm struck by the fact yeah, that there was no contribution. We took it from 50 to 20, I think. That's correct. Yeah. We're currently at 20. That the borough makes no contribution. Are you sure about that? That's what they told us. Okay. What What would you like to? What's your proposal, Lynn? Dollar. Dollar. 
Glenn, how do you feel about a dollar for line 142? I think I concur with a dollar. And have we already addressed line 100? Yep, we already <laughs> took that down to a dollar, Glenn. Great. Thank you. You might Mike? Uh, I'm a little comfortable going down to I zero. Uh, I, I, I mean, I guess at that point in time, we're sending a signal that, that we're, we're no longer supporting this. Uh, I mean, I'd rather no. put it at five or ten. Uh, I would. I think oh, five is very. I, I would like to say five. Speak up, so I'm sure they can hear. I would like to say five thousand. Um. There we go, Bob Statchen. Yeah, I, I would support the the five thousand. Dave Motherway. So the the proposal on on the table is five thousand for the Stonington historical site versus the dollar. Yeah, Lynn made the um, proposal for the one dollar, and then Mike and Deb and Bob have uh, come back with five thousand for it. So that's what we're discussing right now. Um. And. And this goes back to my prioritization approach, right? Is my preference would be to take it for a dollar, and then and then be at it be one of the things that we prioritize. That's the fact. But I'll concur with the five thousand. And I would concur with the five thousand. So, Jim, on line one forty-two, can you take that down to five thousand dollars, please? Got it. Thank you. Jim, can you give us an update on to the totals that we're at currently, please? For Zephyr overall. Whole shooting match, please. Probably shouldn't have said that yeah. the same way either. <laughs> <laughs> Not for the record. The whole, shebang. The whole, <laughs> all, <laughs> shebang. <laughs> I like the, the mill rate, the mill rate increase. Um, and uh, percent tax increase to the average taxpayer. Okay. Mill rate would be at 23.74, an increase of 0.38 mills. The tax increase would be a 2.65% increase, or total dollars of 1,700,000. Department. I mean, Board of the General Government Debt Service and SIP, and then total. General operations. Uh, you want the, the total amount or the uh, percent chance? I want the total amounts. General operations. General operations. Line fifty-four. Twenty-three million three hundred thirty-six thousand. Five hundred eighty-nine dollars, which is an increase of how much from last million, week? One million one hundred one thousand nine hundred fifty-four dollars. Board of Ed. Board of Ed is thirty-eight million one hundred forty-four thousand three hundred and six dollars. I'm sorry, repeat, you cut out on me. 38 million, yep. $144,308, excuse me, $306. Okay, versus last year? Which was uh, 37,901,100. Increase of 308. <laughs> Debt service, 
Debt service is at $8,082,815. That's an increase of $850,597. And finally, SIP. Two million six hundred fifty one thousand six hundred twenty five dollars. Six twenty five. What, what, sorry, Grand one total? More time, one more time on the total SIP. Total SIP is two million six hundred fifty one thousand six hundred twenty five dollars. Thanks. That's a decrease of two million seventy three thousand three hundred ninety nine dollars over last year. That's inclusive of the sewer. Uh, it, yeah, but that's uh, reducing it by, was it seventy nine thousand? Yeah, yeah, right. But still, still got a million dollars right. in the sewers. Yeah, yeah. Yes, exactly. Um. So, how does anyone feel, given that we're contemplating a bond for the sewer, about taking half a million bucks out of the excess fund balance to lower the mill rate? Because, and I'm going to say that, I'm going to say it for the following reason. The two months operating that we have and the cash balance that we've accumulated and spent in, you know, the excess uh, fund balance in the last couple of years and whatnot, um, that was hard earned. I get that. But the two months operating is for emergencies. And so if we find ourselves with one, um, that is what it's there for. If, for example, we don't get the bond or something else goes wrong or we're feeding people or who knows. Um, I would still like to get the mills down a little bit for people. What, what, what are you trying to target on a, the mill increase, Lynn? Um, well, yeah, so I can't, I don't have the numbers to do that math, but I'd like to leave it at 2% or Nick under. Pops. Jim, if we made no I cuts... half a million bucks to do that. Yep, What's Jim, that? well, hang on. Jim, if we made no cuts right now, and used undesignated fund balance, how much would we have to use to get the, the percent increase down to the 2%? Right below. Wait, 2%? And <laughs> uh, 2% of what, the mill rate? The yeah. The mill rate, isn't it already like 1.6%? It is 1.63 no, percent. No, 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 to get the To get the total, you just said 2.65%, which I think you meant was the budget, right? No, that's the taxes, right? It's the tax increase, right? The, ta the tax increase is... 2.65% uh, is tax the tax increase. Ta the tax increase is 2.65%. Right. So, okay, so, so sorry. Let me do the other yeah, just to clarify, this is what I was getting at earlier. Yeah. Does that really matter? I mean, that's the amount to be raised by taxes, right? Which is going to be influenced by... The grand list and you know other fat like if, if I'm if I'm the average taxpayer in town, what what I care about is that percentage change in the mill rate, correct? Which is one point six percent now. Right, right. That's what I'm saying. We're, we're already. Yeah. I thought you said two right, Jim? That was a Part of Mike. I'm not admit, I'm not missing anything, right? If I'm saying the the, the the if I'm a taxpayer in town, what I really care about is the change in the mill rate, right? Right. Yeah, not not this. Well, yeah percent to be raised by taxes. I, I'm, I'm Mr. Chairman. Hang, hang on, Glenn. Let, I want to hear Jim Sullivan answer first, and then I'll come to you. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm more knowledgeable how this stuff works than most taxpayers, so I, I want to know whether my taxes are going up or down, or, or the same. Changes. I don't hear anything about the mill rate, to be honest. Well, are, are we just taking the mill rate and and going and multiplying that against my assessed home value, and, and that's yeah, and that's that's what I'm well, going to be paying. What we do care about the mill rate. <coughs> the mill rate is an end result based on how, how much taxes you want to raise. So the right. first question is how much taxes you want to raise. Then your your mill rate is a it's just a factor of that. Well, so the grand list went up by 1.02 percent, as I recall from some memo a month ago from Marsha, correct? Yeah. And most of that 
had, yeah, Danielle, you probably know, most of that came from uh, accretive things to that grant list. From, sorry, say Right, because we didn't have a reval, so everyone's assessment will more or less be the same, right? Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's genuine growth. Yeah, so the mill rate is, right, so the mill rate is the defining thing to what your tax bill will be. This year, with a non-assessment year. Yeah, right. That's what I'm exactly. That, that, that's what we care about, right? Right. I mean, in this year. Yeah. That's that's what yeah. that's what the taxpayer cares about. Right. Well, okay. So part of the reason that that uh, I would propose to take you know some sum of money out of the fund balance isn't because I don't think we need the fund balance. It's because. It makes it harder for us to just spend it with the bond for sewer on stuff that we don't have to have. But thanks. That's the way I conduct my own financial life. So I realize this is a different enterprise. Jim, Jim, could you do the exercise for us if we took five hundred thousand dollars out of fund balance to offset the mill rate increase? Could you tell us what the mill rate would be? The increase and the tax increase, please. The bill rate would be 23.92, and the tax Wait, increase would be... That, that went higher, Jim. Oh, I'm sorry. I put it in backwards. Excuse yeah. me. <laughs> um, Go the wrong one. With here. No problem. Take your time. I'd rather get it right. I can't run a spreadsheet myself, so I gave the wrong prices the other day to my customer. I'm like, I read 2007. That didn't work. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you, Jim. So I wasn't even close in the numbers. That makes, that makes more sense. <laughs> you say yes right away. Okay. Bill rate would be 23.5. Five six increase of point two zero. The tax increase would be one point eight eight percent. I hate doing that to fund balance, but I like that number better. And again, there, there what, what, was that a point, point? So that. I'm sorry, Jim. Just the, the mill rate increase. Is was, was that? I thought that was a point eight or point nine percent, or what? What did you say? Point two. Point two zero. Wait. Point two. It's point two zero mills. Yeah. Point two zero mills oh, right. increase. Yeah. But again, yeah. I think what, 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 if I'm a taxpayer, what's 1.88% what, tax increase. But that, that again, I, I don't think it's, it's, it's the, mill, the yeah. mill percentage increase, right? That's yeah. what we want to yeah. worry about? Yeah. Which I think is 0 .8, 0 0.085 or, or, or yeah. point, almost 0.9, point almost one, yeah, just point, rounding up to 0.9%. So not even one. Well. So, Jim, uh, can you back into what would get us a tax increase of 1%? Yeah, so we're close. Increase of 1%. Because it was 0.9, you said? We're at 0.856. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, Mike and I both have 0.0856% increase. Right. So, what if, if we took 400,000, would that get us to about, about 1%? It, it, it's mill rate. Okay, we're talking about mill rate. Yeah, uh, right percentage. You play with air. All right. Yeah. So you gotta get the mill rate. Oh, that's wrong. That's, right. yeah. that's one point two seven. Huh? That's one point oh two seven. So that's pretty close. Yeah. So I would propose we take four hundred to keep this here. What happens? So, Jim, can you do the numbers at 400,000 from undesignated in there and give us that? Yep. The, uh, the budget numbers are the mill rate impact here. Uh, um, the mill rate impact. 
Okay, it's 23.60 would be the mill rate. That's a year-over-year -year increase of 0.24 mills. It's a 1.0 point something percent increase. So it's essentially one. Percent. And the tax so, increase? Know, tax increase is 2.03%. However, if Joe Wojcic is still here and reports this, he should explain to, you know, an existing taxpayer his tax increase is 1%. So the net, what we're trying to do is get the net effective tax for the taxpayer down around 1%. Well, that's what I'm trying to do. I understand. Yeah. I'm, I'm just restating it to make sure it's... Mr. Chairman, if, if this, the, uh, Member Young has proposed, uh, I would say that we should get the final numbers across the top, a uh, total, and then make a motion to send this to the Board of Selectmen for placement at the public hearing. Well, actually, we send it to the public hearing. Send this to the public hearing. Mike, how do you feel can about I, that? I, the thought statute, can I ask how much was taken from the, um, from the, the, the fund balance last year? <laughs> about $3 million, $3 million. Bob. Okay, so this is an improvement and moving in the right direction <laughs> as, far as, uh, as far as budget. It was $3 million last year, and it's 400000 this year, and the effort is to try and minimize the savings we're holding from the taxpayer, but also have enough that if yep. we have an emergency, we, we have a little bit of a cushion, but not a large one. Yeah, no, that, that, that seems like progress to go from the $3 million to the 400000 Thank you. Mike, how do you? Yeah, I was just doing some that. I just want to see what our, our cushion was. Uh, you know, if, if we if we do that and take the four hundred, so we'd still be one point three million. million. Yeah, yeah, over uh, over uh, two months of operating. So I, I, I think we're we're, we're okay. It, and um, yeah, yeah, I I would say I I I don't, I don't want to make any further cuts. Quite frankly. Um, and uh, I think, yeah, we agree. That, that, that seems like a, a reasonable cushion uh, as well in terms of the, the, the delta above, above two months of operating. So I, I would support that. Lynn, you're good with us? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Bob? Yes, I, I concur. Deb? And thanks, Member Young. I think it was a, I think it was a productive uh, suggestion and, and good number crunching. I, I, I like the way it ended up, so thank you. Uh, thank you. Dave Motherway? That's, uh, I think, a great message, and uh, thank you, Member Young, for leading us through that. I concur. All right, Director Sullivan, um, can you give us the totals that we will be reporting out? So by general government will be uh, twenty three million three hundred thirty six thousand five hundred eighty nine dollars. Education will be thirty eight million one hundred forty four thousand three hundred six dollars. Debt service will be. Eight million eighty-two thousand eight hundred and fifteen dollars, and capital improvements will be two million six hundred and fifty-one thousand six hundred and twenty-five dollars, for a total of seventy-two million two hundred fifteen thousand three hundred thirty-five dollars. And the I know you said it mill rate would be mill rate would be. 23.60. All right. Um, do I have a motion to submit general government of $23,336,589, education at $39,144,306, debt services? Hold on, hold on. Okay. That's 30. You misspoke. That was thirty-eight million, not thirty-nine million. I, oh, I wrote thirty-eight million here. Sorry. 
Education at $38,144,306. Debt services, $8,082,815. And SIP at $2,651,625. With a total budget of $72,215,335. And a resultant mill rate at 23.60 mills. So moved. Second. I, I got a second. Motion and a second. Motion was made by Mike. Deb got the early second on that one. Sorry, Glenn. That's fine. Um, any further That's discussion? No problem. Any further discussion from the members? All those in favor of this motion? I, this, this. Go ahead, Bob. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, hi, this is Bob Stetson. I'm just curious. And again, we, I mean, as we send this, but this is more of a process question, and I, I don't, I'm not meaning to interrupt the vote, and I intend to clearly vote in favor of it. But as far as the process, are we still in a position to, when we send this to the Board of Selectmen, do they, are they then able to review it to see, based on the extenuating circumstances, whether there will be further adjustments? Then it goes, it goes from us, we send it to the public for public comment. We prepare all the budget books on these numbers. We receive public comment at the end of the public comment. We can review the comments and see if there's adjustments that need to be made. And then we send it to the selectmen for um, referendum for it. Okay, thank you. Uh, given that I'm gonna do because of the uh, level of this, I'm gonna ask person by person for how they vote, Glenn Frischman. I vote for. Uh, aye. Mike Fowerbach? Yay. Lynn Young? Aye. Bob Stachin? Aye. Deb? Aye. Dave Motherway? Aye. And I vote in favor as well, unanimously. The budget has passed. And as a result, I would like to thank all of the department heads the Board of Education, Danielle, everyone who worked hard to get this down to where it is. I will now say my gravity statement that I hope it can stay here um, and the environment and the world doesn't get any worse. And with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. <laughs> motion and a second. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.